Committee for Monday, July 10th, 2023. In accordance with board policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with staff liaison may convene an in-person meet committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. In order con to conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board committee members will say their names before making and seconding a motion, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Additionally, as a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Faya or myself if you must leave the call by using the Teams chat feature so that a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Faya, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Thank you, Mr. Young. Ms. Hen? Present. Mr. McMillian? Present. Mr. Young? Present. Thank you. There are three. Ms. Bea, please call the role of staff members participating in today's meeting. Mr. Hartlove? Present. Mr. Dixit? Present. Thank you. Mr. Hartlove, please state your name for the record and proceed. Um, sure. Good evening. My name is Chris Hartlove. I'm the Chief Financial Officer for Baltimore County Public Schools. Um, and we'll start with uh, contract one. And I'll say up front, and Mr. Dixit will probably repeat it. One item has been pulled. Uh, that's item 10, um, GDA, contract GDA-301-23, um, package 1B. But Mr. Mr. Uh, Dixit will repeat that when we get to that. Uh, the first contract is uh, JBO-720-18 medical billing system for school-based services. Uh, approval is requested to extend the contract for five years and increase contract spending authority by $1,285,000. Mr. Are there any questions of committee members? Please state your name and question. Mr. Young? Yes. This is Ms. Hen. Yes, Ms. Hill. Thank you. Um, are there any changes related to the services we're receiving under this contract for use of this system? I don't believe so. I believe we have staff on. Uh, I believe um, we have staff on hand. I did uh, one thing I did uh, uh, miss out on. Uh, this was also approved by the curriculum committee on June 22nd. Just uh, wanted to mention that. Um, Thank you, Mr. Harlow. Looks like uh, Ms. Myers is here to. Um, and Ms. Pierce. Yes, hello. Um, I'll actually let Ms. Pierce answer this question. I don't believe there are any changes to it. This is a continuation of the contract. That is correct. There are no changes. Thank you. And I have a general question about this, this software in general. Um, perhaps you can answer it for me um, since we're discussing it. And that is, are we capturing parental permission or guardian permission for billing? for these services in the system? Yes, we are. We actually capture, we have the ability to capture electronic signatures mm -hmm. as well as uh, physical handwritten signatures in our PowerSchool uh, SPS system. And then that data is exported to our billing vendor. Excellent. So there are no changes with regards to obtaining that prior to billing? No. Thank you very much. That's all I had. You're welcome. Thank you. Are there any other questions? If not, we'll proceed to the next contract. Mr. Hardlow, would you pr proceed, please? Yes, thank you. Uh, the next contract is KSH-303-19, Community College of Baltimore County, CCBC, College and Career Readiness Memorandum of Understanding. Approval is requested to extend the contract for five years with the option of an addition uh, for an additional five year extension and increase contract spending authority by uh, $13,500,000. And we have staff uh, available um, if you have any questions. Are there any questions from committee members? Hearing none, Mr. Hartlove, if you could proceed with the next contract. Next contract is JB, JBO-716-23, Enterprise Resource Planning System. Uh, approval is requested uh, for 
a five year contract with the option uh, for one five year extension uh, with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of uh, $27 million. The uh, breakdown of uh, the annual subscription cost is $2,076,944. Um, that is the ongoing uh, cost, and there are $13,676,909. Thousand nine hundred nine dollars of upfront um, one-time costs for um, this contract. Are there any committee member questions? I have one, Mr. Young. Go ahead, Ms. Hen. Thank you. Um, are staff available to speak to the selection process um, for Oracle and the details of that? And is this the recommendation of the consultants we were using? For the ERP process, sure, we do have staff on on hand. On hand. This was a full RFP process, so it wasn't a recommendation. It was a it was a process that we went through. But we have um, staff from the three departments uh, or three divisions that this impacts. Uh, Mr. Augusto from DOIT, uh, Mr. McCall from uh, Division of Human Resources, and then we have. Um, Ms. Webster from purchasing to answer any technical procurement questions. Excellent. So your quite your question is is it's yeah. it's procurement in nature. So I guess we should go to Ms. Webster first. It it may be. My first question has to do with whether or not the proposals received were evaluated um, cost blind, and did that eliminate any of the proposals um, we received? So perhaps it is a question for Ms. Webster. Initially, yes, the proposals were evaluated. Uh, blind cost. And can you share if you're at liberty to share if any were eliminated based on? I do not believe so. OK, so those were and this may be a question for Mr. Augusto, then it was a technical evaluation of the proposals. Yeah, so the first phase was a, a technical evaluation, so we had um, an evaluation team made up of members from across all of the business units as well as a DOIT. So there was a um, evaluation based on requirements that we provided in the RFP, um, evaluation against those re requirements, and then also a proof of concept where the vendors came in and displayed the functionality of the system and how would it met the requirements that we laid out in the RFP. Thank you. Were any external parties involved in that evaluation, either from county or state government, DOIT, or uh, third party contractor? No, uh, the evaluation team was made up of uh, BCPS uh, staff. Okay, because this is a, a sizable investment, as you know. Yes, it is. Yes. So I'm, and obviously this is a best in class selection. That that doesn't concern me as much as how we got to that point and mm -hmm. if the other um, individuals were, were consulted regarding the selection in terms of um, either other school districts that were have implemented this, um, county government, other county or state government. Yeah, um, so Ms. Han, what I, I can, um, what I can speak to that is, <clears throat> obviously you're correct, this is a sizable investment with a long range, a long term implementation plan. Um, there are other districts within the state of Maryland um, that are using the Oracle platform. We consulted with them as part of the evaluation process because uh, they provided they were provided as references. We are also continuing the discussions um, once the uh, vendors on board the integrator. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll, we will be having discussions with the other districts just to, you know, understand their lessons learned from the impl prior implementations so that we're better prepared to handle any challenges. Great. Um, have those other districts have those other districts implemented all of the modules that we plan to implement? No, and um, so that's one of the areas that we'll be looking at. Um, the um, financial module Mm -hmm. has not been or payroll has not been fully implemented in the other districts that we've talked to. Um, so that is an area that we'll be focusing on um, to understand where the delays are, what uh, what lessons can we glean from the the effort that these other districts have done. 
what can you speak to and and I'll try to keep my question rest of my questions brief, but yeah. can you speak to which modules have been implemented and which districts we've spoken to regarding that? Um, I will have to look at the notes unless um, Melanie you have. Do you have? Yeah, I, I, I can provide that because that was part of the interview process with the uh, other districts. The, but we can mention those other districts. Is that correct, Melanie? I, I mean, I know what who they are. I just didn't want to say it if I can't. Yeah, we can. I just don't have have the information off the top of my head. Yeah. So if you know yeah. it, that's fine. I do know that, for instance, uh, Montgomery County and yep. Baltimore City uh, both so we we thought that that was favorable be favorable because they're both uh, comparably sized districts. Um, sure. uh, Montgomery County has been used is is fairly far into their implementation, and Baltimore City has been using Oracle for quite some time. And I believe they're upgrading to a, a to to the version that we are going with. So they're um, um, and then there's another uh, district that's using it as well through a different vendor, but they're using the Oracle product as well. So uh, there's quite a few districts using Oracle in the state of Maryland. Thank you. And Mr. Arlov, do you have the details on which modules by chance they're using? Have we talked to other districts in or out of Maryland that are using all of these? And do we have any idea? This is a multi-part question, sorry. Yes. Um, and what the time frame is for implementing each of these? Because each is a significant undertaking. Right. I understand. Time frame, I think Mr. Augusto is. is yeah, is yeah. So um, what I will provide, I'll provide the modules that have been implemented by the vendors that we interviewed, or sorry, the districts that we interviewed. Um, and Ms. Hen, you're absolutely right. If if you think of the ERPS platform, each of these modules would be its own separate system um, yep. with its own complex complexities. Um, so um, that is why the standard um, right now, the industry average for an ERP implementation is right around two years. Um, one of the first things we'll be doing with the vendor when they come on board is looking at which modules to implement first. We're we're mm -hmm. definitely be going to going to be going on a staggered um, implementation approach. Um, we'll determine which one. That's going to be based on the risk profile. That will also be based on um, the complexity we want to tackle um, and also seasonal. So we want to make sure we're not implementing, for example, we're not going to implement the HR module during um, open season. Mm -hmm. um, we and, and, and also in case we're not going to be implementing any of the budget um, modules during uh, our budget season. So all of those factors are going to be weighed into the um, order in which we implement the modules. Sure, I'm I'm trying to understand the um, breakdown of the costs, and is that annual SaaS subscription cost based on full implementation of all of these modules, the four that are listed, or is that prorated based on which we've implemented the two million? I believe that's full implementation, and I would say this, Ms. Head, our current system is very close in annual cost to this, so that's the good thing from an ongoing budget perspective. Um, it's it's close to cost neutral and ongoing. The big costs are the or the um, implementation costs. Sure. Which are one, well, yes. So that's that that's. that's I'm sorry, Ms. Head, I cut you off. I'm sorry. I I understand the implementation. The one time implementation costs are the. Um, huge portion of this that we're being asked to approve. My mm -hmm. question is, Are is the two million flat based on whatever we've implemented at that time, or does it scale based on, you know, if it is two years? Two years is, is pretty aggressive from my understanding of ERP implementations, especially for an organization our size. So if we get one implemented in the first year, are we talking about, still talking about a $2 million SaaS subscription cost? That I don't know how the we'd have to get into the, the details of the contract on what you if it's not fully implemented, um, whether you pay for modules that are not fully implemented or not. That I don't. We certainly could make the argument that if we are not, you know, you know maybe there's something that we 
ultimately don't implement. And if we don't implement it, we shouldn't be paying for it, but an ongoing manner. So, um, but that's a discussion we would have to have right now. I, it's based upon full implementation. Thank you. And because the board doesn't see the actual contract, that's information we, we can't review. And I would hope that that, that cost, certainly if that's the full cost, then and when, once we're up and running with all of it, sure, that's reasonable. But for, for one piece, I, I would want to know if that scales up as we complete our implementation. Because again, I think two years is aggressive. I've seen individual modules take two years to implement. Um, it's a lot of work and I appreciate this undertaking, but I, I would like more information on how these costs are are spread out when we're going to realize the one time cost for implementation. And I'd like to see a project plan um, with what other resources, because the the true cost is a lot more than what we're seeing here in terms of um, implementation and subscription fees. It's it's labor, it's you know people to do the work. So. I'd like to get some more information on this. Um, OK, so so Ms. Hen, I know with the, I can speak to the project plan. Uh, the project plan um, will not be finalized until um, we have the kickoff meeting with the integrator. Because at that point we're going to be determined working with the integrator, we're going to determine order, we're going to determine um, their their process. Um, obviously it is going to follow standard PMBOK uh, PMI uh, PMI process um, with requirements gathering and um, finalization of the the project plans, but that we should have in the August time frame. OK, can can we get a, a cost breakdown? Um, of the that subscript, particularly of the subscription costs with with a general. I, I hear what you're saying about not having that until August. But my concern is we're we're going to approve this spending authority and eat the subscription, you know, the full subscription cost, which if it is a flat cost and we're not fully implemented, I, I would hope Oracle would work with us or the vendor we're going through would work with us on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we whatever detail we have, I think we can get uh, as far as um, the breakdown of the per module cost for uh, the subscription. Right, for, for the annual SAS yeah. subscription cost, if it is yeah. at a per module, the way it's broken down on our exhibit, it, it looks like a flat fee um, right. regardless of what we're doing, which is a, is a hefty price tag considering we're, we're still implementing and it may, may be a few years. Right, we can, we can verify that and, and get that information to you. And and are there any um, consequences of holding this and returning once we have that additional level of detail? In other words, if the committee does not move this forward this evening, um, yeah. are there are there any concerns about moving this to our next building and contracts meeting once we have that information? Yeah, so Ms. Hen, my concern would be, and you already touched on it, and that's um, the two year time frame. Um, any any delays at this point will just start eating up into what is already an industry average of two years. Um, so that would be, you know, we're we're in we're inserting risk into the process that we're not able to meet our July 2025 uh, date uh, because there are um, contractual uh, implications if we go past July 20. 25 because um, we will have to figure out what to do with bridge contract or something that we'll have to do with the incumbent. OK, can can we just get a one question answered then before? <laughs> the board approves this tomorrow and that yeah, is what? on the annual. Um, SAS subscription, the 2 million. Are we going to? Um, incur that while we're implementing the first module. Or yeah, will that I, be prorated until we're live? I will defer. We'll, we'll, we'll look at what we have and we will we'll get it to you before the meeting. We'll get it to this this group before the meeting, whatever we have. I can't promise we have that, but whatever we have, we will get to you before the meeting. OK, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yes. Young. That's all I had. OK, if there are no other questions. Um, 
Mr. Hartlove, if you could proceed with contract number four. Will do. Uh, JME-521-21, direct digital control of heating, ventilating, and air conditioned devices, installation, repair, repairs, parts, inspections, and preventive maintenance services. Oh, oh I'm actually, I'm no, jumping you missed, on. Yeah, you I'm, missed the other oh, Microsoft. I did. I knew I had another one to do. I'm sorry. I'm trying to go so fast here. I'm sorry. We're, we're all actually on contract four which is JMI-619-18 Microsoft Software Solutions. Approval is requested to extend the contract for one year and increase contract spending authority by $2,548,306. Are there any committee questions? Okay, hearing none, we'll proceed to the next contract. And Mr. Dixit. And Yes, and Mr. Dixon, if you could try to bring these, I know that when we get to the um, in in uh, because of our time restraints, uh, the ones that are Deer Park, if you could put those together, that would be appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harlow. This is Pete Dixit. I'm Executive Director for Facilities Management and Strategic Planning. So I'll take care of the all the Deer Park contracts that start with item nine. So this is a replacement project that has been approved by board um, in the capital improvement program. There are 12 construction packages and in the interest of time, I'll go by package number, the amount of the contract that includes contingency and how many bidders bid on the job and the name of the lowest bidder. So the first contract, GDA 301-23, and all of the contracts for this package are 301-23. That's for the general trade, package 1A. The amount is 6,268,130. It includes contingency. There were four bidders, and the lowest bidder is William F. Clinksworth. Incorporated. Package 1B, which has been pulled out as Mr. Hartleff indicated, and once all the procurement process is straightened out, we'll come back to you. Package 2A is for site work. Amount is six seven million six hundred and sixty-three four hundred and twenty-five, including contingency. There are four bidders. Lowest bidder is Kinsley Construction Incorporated. Package 3A is for concrete work. Amount is $3,917,650, including contingencies. There are two bidders. Lowest bidder is Dance Brothers Incorporated. Package 4A is for masonry. Amount is $4,095,300. It has two bids. Lowest bidder is K. Ron Masonry. Package 5A is for steel. Amount is $4,591,400. There are two bidders, and the lowest bidder is Kinsley Steel Incorporated. Package 7A is for roofing and wall panels. The amount is $3,861,000. There were three bidders, and the lowest bidder is Interstate Corporation. Package 8A is for aluminum frame, glass, and, gla and glazing. The amount is $1,717,303. There were three bidders for this contract, and the lowest bidder is engineered construction products. Package 9A is for drywall. Amount is $2,887,500. There were three bidders and the lowest bidder is M3 Contracting LLC. Package 11A is for food services equipment. Amount is $348,729. And um, the lowest bidder, there are two bidders. The lowest bidder is 11,400 Inc. Package 15A is for mechanical. Um, it is uh, amount is 11,781,000. Five bidders, lowest is GE Tignal Incorporated. And final package 16A is for electrical and low voltage item. 
amount is 8,200,863. There were four bidders and lowest is ground, Grounded Electric Construction LLC. So with that, we are requesting your approval for all packages that include contingency for Deer Park Elementary School. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. And the. Mr. Um, Young, I have a question on package 4A. OK, um, hold on one second, please. Just and, and. To maintain quorum and due to our current time constraint, Mr. Dixit has gone through the Deer Park contracts, contract 9 and 11 through 19. So Ms. Hen, yes, you had a question about uh, 4A. Yes, thank you, Mr. Young. Um, Mr. Dixit, uh -huh. on 4A, which is the masonry contract, um, is K-Ron, I believe, masonry a new contractor for BCPS? I don't recognize that name, and I know there aren't many contractors we work with on masonry. To the best of my knowledge, the contractor has at least bid for us before. Uh, I remember name of this contract. Uh, contractor, but I'll let Ms. Webster answer this question. They are a contractor that we are familiar with. Yes. OK, and as part of the vetting process, um, I know that they have 10 to 15 million in annual revenue. Um, this is a sizable contract for them with 4 million um, anticipated, including the contingency. As part of that vetting, do we um, evaluate or ask bidders to respond to how they will meet the needs um, given their current staff and and the feasibility of this. Is that evaluated when we consider their proposals? So they have provided what they will provide us with a performance bond. So the performance bond answers some of those questions. Um, we do look at um, the ability of the company to staff a, a project of any size. Um, in this particular instance, Kron has performed multiple schools for us in the past. Um, so we really didn't have a concern to uh, prod us to do further investigation. So they have done work for us in the past? Yes, ma'am. OK, thank you, ma'am. Um, they list K-12 expertise, so that, that answer is my next question. If yep. they've done work for us in the past. Thank you. Yep. If there are no other questions, um, Mr. Dixit, could you proceed with your next contract? So the next contract is item five, which is for direct digital control of heating, ventilation, and air conditioning devices. The request is for increasing the spending authority by 3,500,000, bringing the revised total to 15,500,000 with four awarded contractors. And just to give a little bit of background to the board members, uh, the contract is for upgrading and repairing direct digital control uh, for heating and ventilation and air conditioning equipment. We have received grant money uh, from ESSER grant to take care of upgrade control software. Uh, and major part of this money is being requested for those addition for the, the additional work. Mr. Are there any Sorry. <laughs> Ms. San, you have a question? I do, thank you. Um, and thank you, Mr. Dixit. I, I recall this um, coming to the board previously, and I believe I asked if these systems um, can be operated remotely. In other words, they're internet connected. Most of them are. Um, so the answer is yes. Uh, I cannot guarantee that every each and every school is connected, but majority of them are. OK. And are we coordinating with DOIT on the security um, concerns around connected devices in our schools and ensuring yes. that? The answer is yes, we work closely with them. They know exactly what the software is and uh, 
uh, software complies with all their requirements. I can concur. Um, <laughs> so. Is that Mr. Gusto? Thank you, sir. Okay. <laughs> I was about to call on you. Appreciate you jumping in. <laughs> That's all I had, Mr. Young. Thank you. Okay. Both. Um, Mr. Dixon, if you could proceed, please. So the next uh, request is NTA-521-23. And this is for a five year contract for electrical repairs, upgrades and parts. Uh, it's a new contract and mostly it is used for operating budget type of work. Are there any questions? If not, Mr. Dixon, if you could proceed to the next contract. please. OK, the next contract DEI 601-23 is for fencing. Uh, and ancillary fencing. Uh, the request is to uh, to approve a five year contract with two recommended bidders and the contract is spending authority of 775,000. Most of the work is done uh, under operating budget. Are there any questions? Mr. Dixon, if you could please proceed. The next contract is DEI-607-23 for HVAC refrigeration equipment uh, and parts. The request is for an eight month contract with three additional one year extension options with five recommended bidders and contract is spending authority of $6,660,000. Are there any board member questions? Mr. Dixon, if you could proceed to your next contract. So the next contract is, I want to make sure I got the number right. All the DFR is done. So we move on to item 20. Uh, 21. This is for the chiller replacement at Logan, Logan Elementary School. This is one of the projects that is part of the capital improvement program that has been approved by the board. And if I can get to this tab here. It's the, the work is to replace chiller, which is the central air conditioning device and auxiliary equipment uh, at, at Logan Elementary School. There are, there, are five, there, there are five bidders, and the lowest bidder is Excel Mechanical Contractors. Are there any questions? Mr. Dixit, if you could proceed with your next contract. The next contract is GDA 309-23 for Martin Boulevard Elementary School for chiller replacement. Um, it is part of the capital improvement program that board has approved and the contract amount including contingency is $826,635. Are there any questions from the committee? I have one on this one, Mr. Young. Ms. Hen, proceed. Thank you. And it's more of a request than a question. Um, but Mr. Dixit, I was at Martin Boulevard not too long ago, and there's some some damage, the wallpaper, drywall. Um, I believe it was in their cafeteria related to their current chiller. And I'm just wondering if that's something we can take care of um, when we replace this. Not under this contract necessarily, but but a smaller yes. project to to take yes. care of that cosmetic and structural damage. Absolutely, we'll work with the principal to see what the request is and we'll take care of that. Thank you. I believe it's some water damage in their cafeteria related to the current chiller, if I'm not mistaken, but your team okay. Okay. has the expertise. Thank you, sir. Uh -huh. And I believe that's the last contract. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Thank you. There being no further questions, we will proceed to closing the meeting. I will now entertain a motion to recommend that items one through nine and 11 to 22 be moved to the full board for approval. Mr. Young, may we separate one item? Item B3. Which uh, contract was that, Ms. Hen? That's, that's JBO 716-23, the ERP system. So that is, I believe, contract list number three. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so then 
that we forward that to the board without recommendation until we receive the additional information um, that's coming from Mr. Hartlove and Mr. Augusto with the cost breakdown. So what, so what we're going to do is I'm going to, we'll separate that out. I'm going to seek a motion right now for contracts items one, two, four through eight. I'm sorry. Um, four through 10 through nine, excuse me, and 11 through 22. So moved. If I could have a second. Second, Rod McMillian. OK, all those in favor of moving. Those contracts to the full board. Um, Ms. Vea, if you could do a roll call vote, please. Ms. Hedden? Yes. Oh, thank you. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Thank you. So there being three in the affirmative, the motion passes. We will forward contracts one, two, four through nine, 11 through 22 to the full board for consideration. Ms. Hen would like to pull out uh, contract item number three. And yes. your request is to not forward that to the board at this time? Um, my request is to forward that to the board without a recommendation at this time. Is it? Uh, hi, is there a motion currently for that? That is my motion okay. to forward to the board without recommendation. OK, so is there a second on that motion? I'll second it. Rod McMillian. OK. So we have a motion to forward. Contract item three to the full board without a recommendation from building and contracts committee. Ms. Faya, if you could. Call the roll, please. Thank you, Mr. Young. Ms. Head? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Thank you. So the motion passes. Item three will be forwarded to the board without a recommendation from the committee. The last Thank item you. on the agenda is announcements. The next building and contracts committee meeting will be held on Monday, August 7th, 2023 at 5 p.m. Is there any further business? Mr. Here, Young, just yes. I'm sorry. I, I, what I'll do then is, is I'll send that uh, information uh, hopefully earlier tomorrow morning uh, to the three uh, committee members here. So you'll have that um, information prior to the board meeting tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hartlove. Hearing none, the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening.